Greetings, I'm Reverend Tiffany White Sage Woman. The topic for today's video is the effects of healing from a healer's point of view uh, when a healer receives a healing from another healer. The last month I have been feeling off. I haven't been feeling quite right and I would check in with my guides and they would, hey, this is all part of what is happening with the energies everywhere. So, um, you know, earthwide, universally, just this is what's happening. The raising of the vibrations, the raising of the dimensions, us energetically. It's affecting us, the earth. And it's a good thing <laughs> uh, if we allow it and we be gentle with ourselves during these changes. For those that don't like change, it can be very uncomfortable. At now, it can be uncomfortable even for those who understand and are aware of this process. What we have to do is be patient, patient with ourselves, be patient with the healing process. I find too that it can even take a little bit longer than it used to. Uh, usually when I felt um, when, when I energetically was going into a different, uh, higher vibration, it could take like a week or two. And many people experience this if they are working on their um, spirituality and their, and their soul's development <clears throat> to where they, I just need to rest today. They listen to this and they take care of it. So that was just a little... Uh, prelude into the topic just to give you a little bit of background of how I have been feeling and it got to the point to where I I just recently um, I had came across a, a woman several weeks ago from a radio show a healer she's very powerful and f for me I like this is this is the lady that I, that I need to book my session my healing session with and I knew it and I knew I needed to go to somebody other than just uh, my healers that I have, my spirit healers. I was like, okay, uh, I want to make sure I'm not missing anything, <clears throat> you know, from my spirit healers that they're telling me message-wise. It's always good, though, always good to go get an energetic, an energy healing. It's a Reiki session. Even if it's a massage, you'll be surprised. Um, the messages that that you do receive uh, in a massage from from your own guides, especially if you haven't been hearing them, go get a massage. Reflexology, having your feet rubbed, ah, oh, so magical. Anyway, so I um, have been uh, providing self healing, and I noticed recently that I felt like a slight tug or resistance so to speak, in the release, in the total complete release aspect. I knew there was some stubborn, deeply embedded restrictions that prevented me from fully reaching my divine essence. I asked the guides, the angels, for my highest and greatest always, to direct me to the right healer, and I was. So I had my session several days ago. It was scheduled to be a half hour session. This half hour session turned into an hour session for there were some deeply embedded past life luggage that needed releasing. I knew that I have carried over a lot from past lives and have been working on it, the releasing, forgiving, releasing, Oh, for, for the last 10 years or more and that's great when we can do that sometimes we do need that extra help the extra push it actually took several attempts to pry loose old beliefs old vows and soul agreements with others as I gave myself permission to release I felt that all too familiar urge to hold on to what was left. I have been releasing what no longer serves me for many years now. It isn't a fast process, especially when you try to accomplish this on your own. 
even with the help from your own um, spirit healers. It's not a fast uh, process. Not when you have years and years and then even past life stuff brought over. Think about all the years that it built up and accumulated. All right, it's not going to take that long to release, <laughs> but it's still going to take, just take some patience and some time. We often overlook or lie to ourselves that all is well, even though we really know that isn't true. It took several permissions to release attempts before finally we had a takeoff. <laughs> And once that string of old energies started to move up and out of me, it pulled with it more junk that needed to be released. It's like that string theory, you know, don't pull the string on the sweater because then you keep pulling and the whole sweater's gone. So that's what it's kind of, it creates when you hold that in you, this, this mass, it takes on this, what people call disease. So you pull that string and you start pulling it all out. You can remove it. It can be overwhelming to see and feel all that negative issues, vows, promises, soul contracts, etc. to come to the surface and come to the light. I was crying as this huge release took place. It felt sad to let go at first, but once the lies were exposed in the light, I was upset at myself for holding on to all the self-limiting and negative contracts. The healer part of myself reminded me to just observe this release only. Do not judge. Do not be upset. All these blockages and past life luggage resided in the male part of myself. The healer facilitating the, healer, the healing session was surprised that she was directed to the male side of myself, for usually it is the female side she is guided to. I was not surprised at all, however. It has been ongoing in healing the, the male for me, the, um, the experienced karma, so to speak. I remember many past lives as a man, as a warrior, and even part of many brotherhood societies. I gave myself and my healer permission to release all vows, rituals, oaths, promises from past lives right up to this life. Any secret society or brotherhood or organization that you've belonged to, those rituals and vows are very deep. And it does take some releasing. All right. and, and, and also to the brainwashing that was experienced, any brainwashing that you um, had experienced. Um, that's part of the lies. When we were done with the session, I drank a lot of water. <laughs> I was shaking, and when I stood up, I felt that my legs were weak and heavy. I continued to hydrate myself, as I know that's what you're supposed to do, and take deep breaths. I was inhaling the divine source of power, that empowerment, and releasing false power. Because interestingly, there, as we were releasing, as I was releasing and the, the healer was facilitating this release, she was saying, we're releasing all power, releasing all power. And I questioned, I said, well, wait a minute, isn't that power spiritual power? And she says, no, a lot of it's false power. The false power we release. We do not release the divine source power. We replace that. False power with the divine source, power, and empowerment. I did eat some dinner afterwards. I cleaned up the dishes, then had my radio show on Tuesday evenings at <laughs> Spiritual Insight. Radio show at 8 p.m. on Goldilocks Productions on Blog Talk Radio. I did feel tired, and it was a bit off still, and, and but I got through everything, got through it all. I slept very deeply and I'm not a deep sleeper. And I felt better energetically in the morning. Once up out of bed and performing my usual tasks for the morning, the morning after the session, I noticed that I felt numb emotionally. The male side was stunned and felt lost at first. Who am I? 
And has this life been a lie too? Have I been wrong in what my mission truly is? The female side of myself came to the rescue, giving my male side the love and reassurance I need. Yes, my guides and angels helped me as well. My feminine goddess part of me rose to the occasion. After all, I have been preparing for this moment for a very long time. In my teenage years, Isis showed up and has been working with me since then and my feminine side to help bring balance back within me to strengthen the female side just for this moment. Interestingly, my healer kept calling me goddess, like she spoke directly to my female side, alerting me it's time to hold space for the male side as I release and realign and recalibrate myself. Once you release an energy, that void needs to be filled. If you don't replace the energy with balanced energy, there is a risk that the fear and doubt will pull the negative energies right back in, right back into that space. And I like to use this uh, parking space analogy all right, for those, like, so let's imagine uh, negativity. There's a vehicle of negativity in this space. And it backs out and it leaves to release. All right? Now, positive balanced energy vehicle pulls into this vacated space. And a healer usually holds this space for you. That's what the healer is constantly blasting you with love and light, love and light, love and light to fill any of the voids. So if any pings or doubt occur, like um, phantom pain, when you remove something, there's a phantom pain. And negativity turns to look back at that space, right? It won't be able, though, to go to the space, for that space is now filled with positive, balanced energy. The negative negativity has no choice and nowhere else to go but to release. So the healer will saturate, the healer and, and the spirit healers will saturate your energy field with love and light so that it prevents negativity that is being released from fi finding a new space to occupy. Giving you that false sense that I am healed and I am released. No, it just took another spot. All right. So I knew I needed assistance with this. I needed some powerful assistance. In, in helping to blast finally this old energy that's been slippery and sneaky and trying to to hold on and finding another void to go into. This healing, this frequency shift felt both bad and good at the same time. It is important to let the releasing happy, happen. Don't doubt the process of healing. Don't let the effects of healing scare you right back into the dark hole of hiding and false security. So who is this amazing healer I had my session with? Contact me if you really must know. She was just what I needed because we're on the same vibrations and energy level. This is not to make anyone feel bad. You want someone on the same vibration or higher to, to, as a healer. Ask your guides and angels to bring you the right healer, the one for your highest and greatest, and then the healer will present themselves to you. And know this, as you ascend vibrationally, a former healer may no longer serve you, and you may be directed to a new one. If you have a very high vibrational healer, then you may continue your healing sessions with them, until you reach the same vibration or even surpass them. It's the surpassing them where you're going to need a new healer. On the same level and same vibration is fine. It's once you surpass, you're going to need another higher vibrational healer. All right. So once you're on a high vibrational, then a new healer will be assigned to you. Trust your intuition and your guides. Trusting in the divine source is truly a huge part of healing. Healing is ongoing until we reach that balanced state of being when our rainbow, our golden bodies are accessed and fully online or on alignment with the divine source.
Now I did do a video um, before, I do believe on rainbow bodies. And for more information on the rainbow body, please visit William Henry. He has a website, he's on Facebook, you just search in the search engine, William Henry. And you will find he has done a lot of research on this rainbow and golden body and you'd be very fascinated by um, his videos and, and his webinars. So I wanted to share this with you. Let everyone know it's not to scare you of having a healing session, but it's to let you know in case some people think that, well, after a healing session, I'm supposed to feel perfect. I'm supposed to feel right on. Not always. Understand that, that it's a constant flux of bad and good, bad and good, bad and good, as it's trying to balance, bring us to a place of balance. So you're not always going to feel so wonderful. But don't let that scare you because you do feel good. Um, even if you feel bad at the same time, when you get through all of this, when you are uh, complete for the, the temporary realignment and recalibration of the next vibration, then you're okay. And, ah, okay, I feel like my feet are touching the ground again. I, I feel familiar with this space now. And that's the thing, is that when we are going from one vibration to the next, um, always, you know, going higher, uh, we still have access to the lower vibrations, but we're going to work in this upper vibration. All right. And we it's a new space, so we feel unfamiliar. We feel that this space around us is new. Um, we don't know how to proceed. You know, uh, It's like walking into, you, you have an old home, a home, and you're familiar. You know where everything is, right? And you move into a new place, and you're kind of maybe not you're not familiar with living there with being there you know with the room with the rooms and how do I proceed where do I go how do I set the house up how do I do this it's that same and you know feeling for moving moving feeling from one vibration to the next so give yourself that time I usually find that it can take um, it can take several times. Um, uh, I'm sorry. It could take. It could take um, a couple weeks. It could take a day. It could take a couple weeks before you feel like you're back in alignment and back on. So it's very important to be gentle with yourself. And if you are a healer and a reader, you can take that time off. It's important to take the time off if you feel off balance. So thank you so much for, for watching my video. My website is whitesagewoman.com. Many blessings.